Hello on Sunday. Um, we have been in the house now for, I don't know, four hours. Um, we have done two critical jobs, which is to put up the security cameras outside, which took forever. Um, and we have finalised the decisions that needed to be made to finish the lighting plan for downstairs or the electric plan for downstairs so Dad can finish rewiring. So I'm going to talk you through some of the things that we've decided to do in the kitchen to, um, yeah, for what we want it to look like when it's finished. So we're in the kitchen and one of the first things that we've decided to do is this end. So firstly, the kitchen is a slightly weird shape. It's got a big kitchen, um, but it's not a traditional shape. It's got two portions that stick out and then kind of like a corridor section through the middle. Um, and so this bit here, so the back door is over there and then there's a sticky outy bit here. There used to be a tall cabinet in the corner and then just low units. There's not a lot of wall space in this kitchen. But what we've decided to do, let me see if I can flip this around. So what we've decided to do here is actually make this a pantry. So the uh, there will be a stud wall from the window all the way across and make a defined pantry space. Um, in this pantry, there'll be shelves for pantry stuff, um, but there will also be a butler sink and drain board and dishwasher. So you can just like pile up all your mess in there um, and keep it out of the way. And then on this side, we've decided that although I have, this is a tall fridge, um, Rather than the originally the design we had was that the kitchen would kind of be designed around it, but we've decided that we'll ignore it and go for an under counter fridge design. Um, so we're going to run kitchen units all the way along into this other little nooky piece. Um, that's the door through to the dining room, and across here will be the oven, grill, hob either, doesn't really matter too much at the moment, either in a tall unit configuration with a high electric oven or an under counter electric oven with a hob and extractor fan and then corner cabinets over here. Also some, somewhere and probably underneath this window will be a small sink for veg prep and I'll put in, um, I really want one of those fancy I uh, really want one of those fancy uh, drinking taps where you've got sparkly water, hot water, drinking water, filtered water. That would be very cool there, but that's going to come down to budget when I buy a sink. Um, the final decision that we've made is that across this wall, which at the moment is just the corridor between the back door and the dining room door, but we can put in some full ceiling height larder cupboards that are shallow so dad reckons about a shelf and a half or two shelves wide maximum so whereas a kitchen unit would come out is it 660 centimeters to about here these would only come out about that deep um and that will allow us to have Loads of little shelves and drawers and pullouts for things like spices and cereal. Um, I want to have um, electricity supply there so that in the middle I can maybe have a cupboard to hide away things like coffee machines, kettles, stuff like that. Um, this door is going to come out completely up to where you can see we've started to dig out for the rewire, just trip it over a ladder. Um, so this piece here, that much of it, can just get knocked down. It doesn't need to be a door. I was planning on taking the door off anyway, because it's just too much of a corridor, otherwise taking up too much space. And then the tall radiator that's hanging on the wall, just there, can hang here instead. So you've got a private area or a discrete area that comes in from the back door. It's warm with a radiator straight through 
into the kitchen that will, the fridge is now like right in the way, but the pantry here pan around to kind of an L-shaped kitchen, which I think would be really nice. And then in this section here, which is where the back door is, there's a cupboard under the stairs, which is a bit, it's quite big. And my plan is to turn this into, it's gonna be a bit echoey in here, sorry. And my plan will be to turn this into um, like a dog room, not where the dogs will live. But when I bring the dogs in from a walk, I want to have a deep Belfast sink here with a hose tap so that I can get them in, dry them off, hose them down if I need to. Um, all of the dog food and the cat food can be stored in here and then sort of have a some cabinetry here um, that will house welly boots, walking boots, dog walking coats, leads, all that stuff. So these are the decisions of the day and I feel really excited to have a design. I will also say that I have had recently a um, kitchen design back from Howden's um, and it, it didn't really do anything for me. It wasn't for, didn't really satisfy the needs that I wanted and it wasn't very inspiring. I actually asked a kitchen designer to come in because I thought that it would be a good way to get some new ideas and things that I haven't thought of but in actual fact it was a way to um, be quite underwhelmed. So I think that the decisions that me and dad have made today are much more in keeping with how I want to live and I think um, maybe what the next, you know, things that we're going to attract and interest the next people to live in this house as well. Um, and I can't wait for us to finish upstairs so that we can start doing downstairs now, which is very cool. We took the ceiling light out of the living room. So we're in the living room. Um, the ceiling light has come out. This is the source of the weird earth light that was just, the earth um, wire that was just sort of dangling down from the upstairs uh, wall socket. You can also see from the smoke marks that this was about to catch fire. Um, and yeah, very, very pleased to be rewiring and getting rid of all of this old junk because the more we do, the more we unearth, the more we realize how dangerous some of this stuff was. are they? There's two power cables that come up in the airing cupboard. And you don't know what they're for? Well, it's the supply for the boiler, but I don't know where they are, they do. Oh. Well, I think I'll just forget them in a little bit when we get round to it. Okay.
loads of the end of November at this point, but um, I took um, a snapshot of the uh, budget and the expenditure um, at, on the 30th of October, so the last day of March, is that 20th of October? I don't know, it doesn't matter, end of October, um, to just do a quick review with you of the costs. So, um, the total paid at the end of November, at the end of October, for the renovation so far, was four thousand eight hundred and ninety-nine pounds. That's a, that's cumulative, so that includes the costs for September. So the new costs for October were the fence. It's also pouring with rain. Sorry if you can hear that. I'm hiding in the van, and uh, it's a weird angle because the, the camera is just propped up wherever I could make it stay, basically. But anyway, the new costs in October was the costs of the fence. So um, I had the hedge removed with the uh, uh, roots drilled out. There was the surrounding front privilege hedge and there was another hedge at the back of the, in the back garden. Um, so that was taken out. Um, new fencing out front was put in and um, also gate posts. And the cost of that was £3,450. We had some additional... Um, costs for plumbing, so some more pipe and push fit um, fittings, which was £201. Um, the first round of expenses for electrics came in, which is £350. Um, I, miss, I had a miscellaneous cost of £268. Essentially, that was the um, the cost of having of the ring cameras so that I had some security when I'm not here. And then September costs were £632. So the cumulative total for the renovation so far as of the end of October, just under £5,000. And the total expenditure in October alone was just over £4,000. Um, so, so far, so good. Um, November is looking like it's not going to be a particularly spendy month. We're still just working our way through slowly the, re the house rewire. It is taking a long time. I'm 100% reliant on my dad to do it. There's only so much he can do in a day. Um, and there have been a lot of days when neither of us have been here. So it's slow going. But it's saving me thousands of pounds. Like um, a full house rewire like this could cost easily £10,000. Um, the estimated costs for a full house rewire on Trekker, Checker Trade, where they offer, like, they give you some price comparison stuff, um, was about £7,500. And that was just the the cost of the rewire. So adding in additional things that need to get done, um, the repair work and, like, plastering and stuff that will happen afterwards. Um, we've been, once again, we've been flexible and we've allowed ourselves... Um, to just sort of change the plan as we go, which has been um, another really important factor of doing our own renovation. If I'd had hired in contractors, um, I would have had to have had the plan ready up front and then it would have been difficult to change that plan. But doing it ourselves, we've been able to roll and adapt and change our minds and sort of, you know, based on how easy or difficult something might be on a given day, we've we've sort of made different decisions and that's been really, really valuable. And I don't know that you can put a cost on that because um, it would have just been scope creep if I was working with a contractor. So yeah, really, really pleased with how things are going. Um, I've not been here very much. Um, there's going to be some uh it's going to be pretty light in terms of material probably in the run-up until christmas uh, i'll do another at least monthly cost update at the end of november and maybe just a quick progress report um before going into december and just take it from there anyway that's going to be the end of this video thank you again for watching if you um are interested in finding out more about our uh, diy renovation then do please like and subscribe because Apparently it does actually make a difference. Anyway, take care.